All right. Well, welcome everybody. I love seeing all these great faces and I see some people who have been to stable, some stable artists, some new people. I know we've got visitors all the way from Seattle and DC and probably everywhere in between. Uh, my name is Kaylee Wasenko. I am the Director of Advancement and Operations at Stable. Um, and for anybody who is new to Stable, not quite sure what we are, we're a brand new nonprofit organization in DC founded by artists for artists. Um, the three founders are, are here on the call with us. They're going to be part of the um, uh, part of the discussion. We've got Caitlin Teal Price, Tim Dowd, and Lynn Myers. Um, and this organization is really all about artists supporting artists. Uh, so we have uh, about 30 artists who are working in studios that we offer at below market rent um, so that they can afford to live and stay and thrive. Um, and we also have other just really great programming like cool exhibitions like this one that you're going to learn all about. Um, and just different activities and ways and partnerships and engaging with international partners and national just to bring really amazing cool art um, that elevates all of the artists of Washington DC. Um, and so we've got all kinds of great things in the works. Um, I'm going to just some housekeeping. I see everybody has uh, muted themselves, which is really great. I'm going to um, go ahead and just mute everybody just to be sure. But, you know, we're really good about um, it's almost like we've been doing this every day of our lives for the last three weeks. So I appreciate everybody's um, really good etiquette with that. Uh, if you do have a question throughout today, please just enter it in the chat box. We'll be monitoring that and um, that we're going to try to get to all the questions that come through. So please feel free to type it all in and, and share and be engaged. We would really, really love that. Um, this is the, the introduction to Natalie Von Vey's uh, exhibition, Not Yet Future of Free. And this was originally intended, this is our second official exhibition for Stable. And um, the original concept was just so beautiful and heavy on performance and interaction. Um, and obviously all of that has changed. And Natalie has really had to pivot very quickly um, and transfer this into a really unique online engaging experience, which I think she's done really well. So um, today is gonna be about sharing all about the exhibition, how it's changed and what great experiences we can still bring to you. Um, I think they're gonna be really beautiful and interesting and some things that uh, hopefully you've never seen before. Um, and with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Natalie Von Bay. Like I said, she is the curator of Not Yet Future or Free. She is just completing her MFA at the Maryland Institute College of Art. She's also the resident storyteller at Washington Project for the Arts, and she's the grant manager for their Wherewithal grants, which is a, a subgrant that they have through the Warhol Foundation. So um, she's got a lot of things on her books and a lot of really great stuff to share. Um, so Natalie, I'm going to turn it over to you and founders Caitlin Teal Price, Tim Dowd, and Lynn Myers. Thank you so, so much. It's amazing to see all of your faces here. It makes this, this is probably one of the most heartwarming um, virtual experiences I've had so far since quarantine. So thank you for starting this project off in the most fitting way. Um, the silver lining to all of this is being able to share it with all of you, no matter where you are. Um, so I'm just going to in the interest of time, um, and it's a beautiful day in DC. I don't know about elsewhere, but I'm going to walk you all through the project, um, screen share my screen for a little bit, just to share the online virtual format um, and give you all a little insight into the amazing projects that are going on. We have some of the artists who are participating represented here in the call too. So I just, first of all, wanna start and acknowledge the fact that this by no means is a single handed effort. This is a, an immensely collaborative um, project and I am so, so, so grateful to all of you for being a part of it. Um, the project started a year, even more than a year ago with me thinking about um, science fiction and fantasy and how we use words to envision future possibilities and how we create portals to other ways of being through um, through our words and stories. And as I kept diving into this research, I started opening up the conversation to um, some of my close collaborators and also other artists who I had not had a chance to work with yet. 
um, like Rex, who is an amazing friend, but we've never, ha never had been able to work together. And as I was thinking about words, I was introduced to this amazing text by Kara Keeling, which is about poetry from the future. And that's actually a Marxist term that is about um, sensing a future world that we do not live in now and how we can sense and imagine more um, liberated futures for all of us through um, non-verbal languages and pushing the boundaries of our languages and words to really think, um, think beyond the boxes and con confinements that we're situated in now. And that And as I open the conversation up to collaborators, that should expand more. My internet connection is a little break out at any point. Um, I want to make sure that I share all this. Um, and so, a project, as Kaylee said, was with a series of performances. And that all changed in March, um, as we all have had to um, force all of us collaborators to adapt in new ways. And Sorry about that. I think we, uh, Natalie had just a little bit of technical disc. Oh, okay, you're still there. <laughs> so sorry. Did I miss anything? Did I catch up? <laughs> It doesn't matter. Um, some of the many glitches that we're dealing with now, but thank you for bearing with me. Anyway, so I'm going to screen share the project um, and give you guys a preview of how things adapted into this online format. I am so incredibly lucky that I pulled in Christian and Jacob from Composite Co to be graphic designers early on. And so I was fortunate that when we were thinking about what it would look like to do a virtual project. I had them on my team and I was already had a virtual collaborative relationship with them. So we were able to really spend some time thinking through what it meant to have an exhibition online and what it would look like to really create a space that felt three dimensional and kind of like its own in between space connecting this different individual home um, and all of our practices. And one of the things that came out early on was the fact that because this isn't an exhibition and we can't replicate the experience of seeing art in person, um, uh, I started thinking of this as a publication or a chronicle of process and how we could present the amazing work that all of the artists were working on that still allowed for time and change and adaptation. Um, and Tim and, and a good mentor and collaborator, Zoe Carlton and I had a conversation early on and we were thinking about um, what it meant to be doing art in this time and what it meant to be reaching and um, bringing art to an audience when we couldn't be in person and when all of our different levels of access were so different right now. Um, not all of us have great internet connections. Not all of us have homes where we're able to continue our practices. Um, some of us are still working. We're all entangled in experiencing this very differently, but also very similarly at the same time. And so how we could embrace process and change and the, the sense of time at this moment where it feels both elastic and also um, rapidly moving. And how each day is so different and the things that we're adapting to when I was first planning this project are, may not be the same in six weeks when we conclude. So this is to give you a sense, if you want to check out the project, you can go to notyetfuturafree.org. Um, you first are brought to this homepage, this beautiful homepage with this um, moving graphic by Christian Jacob. And the title is an homage to um, a letter to the future and thinking about how fonts and language shape the world for good and for bad. 
So Futura as a font has perhaps had oppressive, um, oppressive results on our very highly capitalistic um, and industrialized present world. But thinking about what a language of the future would look like that is more feminine, that is queer, that is more in touch with our natural environment. And, but it's supposed to be ambiguous and poetic. So that's, that's my explanation and I won't give it again. No, I'm just joking. Um, anyway, so as you scroll down on this homepage, this is just one of many ways to discover all of the different amazing work that will unfold over the next six weeks. Um, we have an incredible project by Twin Jude and Mel Campos, and they are based currently in Santa Fe, and they're both, Mel is a massage therapist and artist, specifically thinking about um, uh, holistic health for uh, queer black and brown folks. And they are working on a multidisciplinary collaboration where they're thinking about language and they're using sound and photography and performance. And you will see that project as it's unveiled um, on their page over time, over the course of these six weeks. The amazing Hannah Spector is a poet and multidisciplinary artist who is finishing up her MFA at UT Austin. And this is one of the many incredible parallels um, between my work and some of my collaborators in that there's quite a number of us that are going through um, our MFA programs at the same time. And right now it feels most, so much more poignant to be continuing to do this project to support all of the artists and um, to support all of them, but especially those of us who have lost our thesis projects. I feel lucky to be able to have my practice be a practice of adaptation. And so I can still present my work, but so many visual artists right now do not have that opportunity. So Hannah is one of the amazing artists that is included in that group. She is presenting three works over the course of the next six weeks. The first being an incredible, powerful, performative and poetic um, multi-layered video that she put together. And this was originally intended to be viewed in a sculptural immersive sense. Um, and so I recommend spending some time with this with headphones and full screen um, and make sure to view it soon because like you'll see as I go through other projects, these pages will be changing over the next six weeks. Um, you will want to like go back and continue to spend time with things and regularly see how they are updated and how they evolve and change. Um, one of the cool fun functions that Christian and Jacob thought they were building this site was thinking about how again like i said the space could be three-dimensional and so there are so many ways to get to artist work so you can from one page go to another artist page like the amazing Anne, who's a textile artist in natural dyer and um originally for the exhibition she was working on this incredible huge installation um, fabric installation that would fill stable space and really create a sense of like a portal. But now we've had to think about like what her work looks like in this context. And Anne, I know you're out there, so hi. <laughs> um, and she is thinking about how she transitions her practice and how she begins growing plants for natural dye projects in her home. And she will also have a workshop um, on I'll, I'll get to the programs later so I don't miss say a date, but in mid-May she'll do a natural dye workshop to a virtual one. The amazing Sarah Bueno, um, she and I first started talking as she was going through a process of getting her O-1 visa. She is um, based between Philly and Istanbul. And so she was thinking about the excess of paperwork that she had been accumulating over the process of trying to apply for a visa to stay in the US and teach at um, art school. And so she was going to do a project where she was using an ancient technique of pulping paper to make brick. And she was going to use photocopies of all of the excess paperwork that she'd accumulated and also invite other participants and community members to mail her paperwork from their excess of bureaucracy, whatever that might mean, like going through a divorce or going through the legal system in some way. And now we've, her practice was particularly interesting to think about how it translated into a virtual form because not only 
is sculpture hard to translate online, but also she left the US to go back to Istanbul early on um, during this pandemic. And so now we're dealing with time differences and all sorts of different constraints to how we share um, her work. And she thought of this incredible um, uh, adaptation to her work where she is proposing a monument for, a, um, for the future. And she will provide instructions for, um, for participants to make bricks at home using the process. And then she will ask people to document those bricks that they have in one day post pandemic. These will all be hopefully exhibited together. Um, so that's a really exciting and beautiful opportunity that we have with her project. And so again, check back to this page regularly because we will post a tutorial of her both doing the um, pulp making process and also um, a Fluxus like instruction manual for how to participate and make bricks yourself. And then on to the incredible Erin Sutliff and Eileen Ray Walsh. Erin um, and I are close collaborators and have worked together in the past. And her project for the exhibition was going to be using flowers as symbols and metaphors um, to further bring life into the gallery, but also interact and um, play with the different artists' work in a poetic way. Um, and since the pandemic, she has been, sorry, my internet's slow. I hope it's like, it'll eventually load for you all, but just to give you a sense. Um, since the pandemic, she's been in conversation with Eileen Ray Walsh, who's another artist and florist based in Richmond. And they developed a practice of just sending each other back, um, only communicating in images and sending each other um, pictures of the flowers they encountered, but also the arrangements that they made. And they have adapted this pro uh, project to be just an incredible poetic conversation back and forth between them in a collab, and it's also a collaborative photography project, which I think is amazing to think about how images can be a form of communication and also how photography can be collaborative. And you are invited to receive flowers from this project, and you can text Futura Free to 555 888. So if you're interested in receiving their messages, I encourage you guys to do that. I'm really excited about this one. Um, another place you can get back to the artists is this middle page. You can see everyone's incredible name and go and explore each project. Um, Rex Della Picarin, who is also here, it has been working for, the, for a year since we first started talking about a project that would use stories from a Harvard database of Iranian immigrants in the 70s who had come to the US. And using those, um, those transcripts and translating them through movement. And so she's been collecting an incredible amount of research and also will be um, performing on May 29th. So again, please check back to this amazing page and continue to see how it unfolds. And um, I encourage you all to attend the May 29th performance too. Um, I could spend so long on each one, so apologies. Ashley Shea is another incredible artist and she has been creating um, her own dialect that she will use as a score to think about how we disrupt systems and build new systems. Um, this project has also been an adaptation since COVID-19. Um, so she was originally going to choreograph a series of performers and now she will be performing and choreographing herself. Um, and that performance happens on Sunday, May 31st. Nina Allen is um, an amazing artist who is also finishing up her MFA at MICA in the Mount Royal Multidisciplinary Program. Um, Nina is both a graphic designer, sculptor, and multidisciplinary artist, and she was building the most beautiful install immersive installation for Stables Gallery Space, and I am so heartbroken that we won't be able to share that, but also so grateful how Nina has translated her work to this virtual format. And so she has shared poetry from ritualistic practices that she's doing, thinking about the ocean and um, the metaphor of herself as a mermaid and thinking, and there are motifs of Afrofuturism in here. And also, um, again, you'll just 
it, it's beautiful and she's thinking uh, Nina brings in oceanography and also poetry into her work and so again please spend some time with her work as well I'm sorry everyone that I'm breathing breezing through your work so quickly I don't I could spend forever um Mojda is was the last artist I pulled in for this project and I'm so grateful that she was able to participate because she and I had connected over the last six months and I wanted and our practices are eerily aligned even down to the words that we use to describe them um, and there just wasn't enough space or time to work with her for the exhibition and I'm uh, so grateful to have this opportunity to work with her now. Um, she will be sharing three different um, rituals and videos that will layer over time to create one video that will be screened at the very end of the project. Um, and she is thinking about grief and the process of grief and grounding and growing. So how we transform out of grief and how we, um, how we heal, but also hold space for those feelings. Um, who else did I, I feel like, I, oh, the last one, my dashboard's a little funny because I have the editing capabilities, but the last one I wanted to talk about was Jevair, who is thinking of a speculative story that's very fitting for this moment, where she's thinking about Turkish cologne culture and how it's a um a welcoming liquid that when you traditionally when you would enter someone's house they would give you cologne to uh, ward off the bacteria that you might be bringing into their house so she's compiling research a uh, research map and zine where she will be sharing this kind of humorous and speculative research project about cologne culture and how it um can and cannot help ward off diseases but also how it's a um, practice and ritual of care and welcoming people um, as well. So yeah, the last thing I'll say is just spent, there's also this incredible info page with all sorts of language, this incredible map designed by a friend and collaborator, Ali Lin. Um, when we were thinking of this in an exhibition, this map was what you would have received in the brochure when you first entered the gallery. And each artist's work would have been situated on the map in a location and now it lives as this ephemeral um, and somewhat ambiguous just like grounding aspect that helps to situate your imagination and also think of this as a world not just a, a site and all has is a practice of imagination experiencing art on a screen so I think it fits really beautifully into the project now. Um, I have, there's so much here, including a list of programs. And this is the last thing I wanted to point to. Um, you will be able to register for all upcoming programs similarly to how you did to get here today. And we will provide um, RSVP links for each program. We have so many exciting projects, including on Sunday, May 17th and um, Saturday, May 23rd, you will be able to hear directly from the artists in their own words about what they're working on. And um, I will also be present for those. And we'll be doing a natural dye workshop, like I mentioned on Friday, May 22nd. And then the two incredible performances by Rex and Ashley Shea will be Friday, May 29th and Sunday, May 31st followed by a talk on Friday, June 5th, that will be similar to this. And I encourage you all to come back for that because that'll be a moment to kind of to reflect um, with me about how the project has evolved over the six weeks, what worked, what didn't work, how, um, and just like think about and what it meant to be working on an exhibition and a curatorial practice with everyone. Um, during at this moment of time who knows where we'll be on <laughs> in the beginning of June um, and then the last final program will be the screening with Mojda um, to see the results of all of the layering of experiments and videos that she'll be working on over the course of the project yeah thank you all so much for joining that's fantastic thank you so much um, I think it's great that you um, laid this out so clearly 
Um, and often these kinds of websites can be um, only viewed as archives. Mm -hmm. um, and this is such a work in progress. And one of the things we talked about in our pre-conversation pre is um, the shift in your role. And I think it would be interesting in this context for you to talk about um, a couple of things. And, and one of them is the, the shift in working from finalized work to work that's in process. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that the, there are two shifts that happen with that one shift. And one thing is actually your role shifted. Um, yes. As a, a collaborator who was curating into a curator who was collaborating. Mm. And yeah, I mean, collaboration is always a central part of my work. Um, even working at WPA, it's like a tenant of um, how we work as a staff. It's how we work with artists we work with. I, as a practice, just always want to ground everything in collaboration and really break down hierarchies, which, Tim, that's something that we bonded on early on when we were thinking about doing this project at Stable is really like, the art world has so many different hierarchies and I've always stayed away from um, being a curator and going, even going to do this program, I felt kind of odd about because I always think of myself as an organizer um, rather than a curator. And I think in some ways that worked out for me well because I was able to think of this really experimentally and as um, a project where I was just creating a container and a world with Christian and Jacob collaboratively. We were like building a space virtually and thinking, and then also it was interesting because the last few weeks, however long it's been since mid-March, uh, we were all going through so much personally, like all of our lives were changing so rapidly that it felt uh, odd to be thinking about work and projects at this moment. And I tried to center the idea of slow, subtle change and health into the project so that not only was my role supportive of my emotional needs at this time, but also every artist, I wasn't, I didn't want to ask them to do something that was adding work. I wanted to be able to reveal their process and not think about this as like productivity or um, a, playing into like a capitalistic system, but just how we support each other right now in a way that um, is both healing and, um, and grounding. Yeah, I, I think it's also interesting that with, within this and because of the archive and the um, re result of the way that this exhibition has played out, that the exhibition is actually going to have a longer life. Um, uh -huh. So that's something that you couldn't have anticipated. Um, yeah. yeah, it's funny. I actually, um, I've committed to this website for five years, at least. And I did that intentionally because I hope to revisit this at some point. And I have no idea what the outcome will be. Um, and I hope that some of this work will be able to be experienced in person in the future. But I also want to think of this as an ongoing practice and the beginning of the, the beginning of something rather than the final results of something. I love that. And, and I would encourage everyone listening and whoever listens to this on YouTube to be really active with the, the site. Um, it is a, it's a collaborative site. It's a site that will change and, and, and live differently. Um, composite is engaging it. Um, there, there is a question um, about a specific within the um, scheduled programming. Is uh -huh. the dye workshop going to include a live demo? Um, yes, yeah. Yeah, okay. and we'll be, um, we have to talk about the specifics of what she will be dying with, but there are, there will be a transformation that you will be able to witness. Um, and also, Anne is incredible and has so much knowledge about natural dye, and she leads these workshops a lot. And um, I think it will be really visually compelling to see um, textile get transformed um, virtually also. And there are so many ways that you can learn from Anne about how accessible this medium is. 
and how um, to incorporate natural diet and natural fibers into your practice um, and into your life. Uh, well, thank you. Um, thank you so much for this. And thank, thank you, you for all. clarity and thank you for working for us um, so hard. Um, you, the transition has been amazing. Um, so we, we're looking forward to seeing how the uh, exhibition rolls out. And I hope everyone will stay tuned. Yeah, thank you all so much. I'm so humbled and grateful by it from all of the support and all of you for tuning in today. Well, Many thanks to Natalie and everybody who joined us today. And please in, enjoy the website, engage in it. It is breathing, it is living, it's going to change. There's new things added, just like Natalie said. So join us for some of the other really cool uh, demonstrations and chats and performances. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you all. Yeah. Oh, RSVP links will be live on the website shortly. So like, that's one of the ways that you can RSVP and make sure you have a reminder so you come back. So And also follow Stable's Instagram account too. That will have many updates. That's yeah, Natalie, way. you're going to be updating it on the weekends, right? The weekends are going to be the time that you'll really post about this. So it'll be fun activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. See you all in the virtual space. <laughs> Bye now. Bye.